Blueberry. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No ease. That's Blueberry. B L U B R R Y. Dot com. Blueberry dot com. Hey everyone, this is Hashtag RDM Russell Devin McLean. And before we get started with today's show, I want to tell you about a couple of sponsors. Starting with brand new sponsor. I'm talking about Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading brand in audiobooks with thousands of audiobooks to choose from. And you can listen to them on any smart device. And if you act now, by going to audibletrial.com forward slash the radio random network, you get a free download and a 30-day free subscription. You can't beat that. I also want to tell you about racket, sound, and lighting. Any job, big or small, if you need a DJ, if you're a band and need equipment, give Bob Tolo a call at 225-773-4639. For more information on the Radio Random Network, all you have to do is go to rrnlive.com. And now it's time for the show. Joining me today on the Radio Random Network, he is the winner of the 2010 America's Got Talent. He is a very talented singer, songwriter, Michael Grimm. Michael, how are you doing today, buddy? Good. I'm doing real good. How are you doing, Mr. McLean? Uh, I'm doing pretty good myself. Doing great. As a matter of fact, no complaints. So before we get started in, in, in kind of talking about your career and everything, let, let, let's, I'd like to give the listeners your newest project. Yes. It's something that you're doing on your own. Mm-hmm. And if you could, if you could give our listeners just a little bit of background on, on exactly what's going on. I'm working with Jamie Borden and Drew Masterpole on, um, in their new studio they put together here in Las Vegas called Studio 824. And a uh, gorgeous little studio. Uh, great guys. I've known these guys, you know, as long as I've been out here in Vegas since, what, 2001. And uh, it's an honor getting to work with them. They're great musicians. And uh, we're we're working on a new album. Right now we're calling it Generation Next, named after one of the songs uh, that we've been recording, one of many. Yeah, we just uh, started a Kickstarter program on it to, to get some funding, a little funding on it. Excited to get it, to get it, you know, finished with, but um, it's... Uh, you know, something we're going to release, uh, I'm certain, by spring. Well, let's you know. talk a little bit about how you got started, inspirations uh, as far as uh, music. Well, I was I was raised by my grandparents, and um, and my grandmother's uh, papa was a preacher, and uh, he, he built a little church up on Old Spanish Trail, out on the edge of Waveland, Mississippi there, uh, off of Highway 90, and um, go to church, and I would listen to my grandmother play piano and she would get my sister and I up and uh, we'd sing songs, you know, Baptist hymns, you know, with her. And uh, she inspired me by the way she played the piano. And it really turned me on to music. And my grandmother loved uh, good, old, good old gospel music and she loved uh, good old country music, you know. And um, so, you know, it, was, um, it just, that's what gave me my start, you know, it was, uh, and she was very supportive uh, when I, went to her uh, singing at times, and she would always uh, get me up. And, and uh, yeah, she was my support. She, she and my grandfather. And, um, and that's, that's, that's really how I got the love of, of music. And then, I, long story short, I started playing, you know, at 12 years old. <laughs> I bought, <laughs> excuse me, getting over this little cold. <clears throat> I bought a, um, I worked really hard for two weeks uh, doing helping somebody put sheetrock up, and and I was able to go and buy me a little karaoke machine from Walmart for a hundred bucks, and uh, that was uh, really the start of me really singing, you know, and, and holding in. And by the time I was, uh, and I and I and mind you, I was playing in all the little local bar rooms around Hancock County, you know, and. Um, and uh, from there, I, I'd say 14 years old, I picked up a guitar because I, you know, I wanted that accompaniment uh, with me, and uh, and I wanted that respect from musicians. I wanted to get, I wanted to get a band, you know. And uh, a lady by the name of Ann McNair uh, came out and saw me, and uh, uh, this is the mother, my stepmother of the late Steve McNair of the, of the uh, Tennessee Titans. Um, and she uh, she took me under her wing and, and put some money behind me, her and her her husband Selma McNair. And um, 
got my own band. I remember we called it the Evening Rush Band. And I had that band for quite a few years um, down there. Played the Mississippi Gulf Coast with it and uh, on into Louisiana. And, uh, boy, and it uh, wasn't long after that. I'd say about 15, uh, 15, I went to Nashville. She brought me to Nashville. I signed my first uh, record deal and my first um, publishing deal as a staff writer for a for a publishing company up there. And uh, it was a good start, you know, and uh, did an album called called John Wayne, John Wayne, no, it was called Take It to the Maker. We had a single release called John Wayne and Jesus, which uh, won me an award through the Christian Country Music Association. And uh, and I got to play the Lyman Auditorium when I was uh, 17. Um, yeah, so that's really where my where, where I started. And uh, from there, I, I just kept on going. And uh, a friend of mine named Pete Leone, uh, who I who I lived with uh, for a while in Mississippi. He had a studio. Uh, we used to do demos there, and I used to pay my rent by playing guitar in the studio. He told me, he said, Michael, he said, there's a show coming to town called Legends of Concert. It'll be in Deluxe. He said, uh, you should go play guitar for this show and do backup vocals for you. And I was a little hesitant, but I listened to Pete, and uh, yeah, and uh, got on the show. I was with the show almost two years, and when the show ended, um, by the time I was uh, 21, uh, the show had uh, uh, headed back to to Las Vegas, and and I just I just said, well, I'll I'll, I'll take off with the circus, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll, I'll ride off with the circus to Las Vegas, and so from there I've been I've been in Vegas ever since, and and Las Vegas has uh, been good to me uh, as as far as uh, uh, getting to sing the music and play the music uh, that I was raised on, uh, you know, uh, the Southern, you know, influence, that New Orleans influence. And um, it's, yeah, it's been good to me. And that's really where how I got out to Las Vegas, you know. And uh, from there, you know, I went on to uh, America's Got Talent. You know. um, yeah. <laughs> well, what was it like for you as a 17-year-old kid to to be on a stage such as uh, the Ryman Auditorium, uh, you, you know, I mean, what was that experience like? Because I mean, you had to it had oh, to be running well, through your mind that I mean, so many giants in in the music oh, industry has yeah. had stood in the same spot. And Even I mean, thinking about it right now, still you know, brings chills up my neck. You know, that makes the hair stand up when I think about it. You know, that I stood on that that stage and, and got to sing. Um, at the mother church of country music, you know, um, no, it, it was, it was such an honor. It was such a big moment in my life. Um, yeah, no, no, <laughs> that was a big moment. You know? So you was, you went from, you know, you, how you got to Las Vegas with the, uh, legends in concert, which that's a pretty big show. And I mean, and then now you're pretty much, uh, one of the premier headlining acts in Las yeah. Vegas. Yes, sir. Trying to trying to get me a, a new residency gig uh, out here. Um, working on a headlining gig out here. The the guy that owns Legends in Concert is uh, I've been working with him for a while. But the, the guy who created it, it, you know, it got bought out by a corporation later. But the guy that created the show named John Stewart, um, he uh, he called me up recently. He he wants to put. Uh, he wants to put me on the strip with my own, with my own show. Now I've been working out here for a long time, um, you know. And, and after America's Got Talent, uh, a lot of people assumed that I would have been on the strip with my own show. Um, but um, no, I've just been playing around ever since, you know, playing different venues uh, around the country and even in Vegas since I was on America's Got Talent. I haven't had my my own showroom yet, and uh, John Stewart's working to get me that. So, a lot of good things. Yes, indeed. Now, with the America's Got Talent thing, did that did that did it hurt your career, or did it did it help it? I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure it has. Oh, it it, 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 it only helped. Yeah, 
Well, it was it was a big, big stepping stone uh, for my career. It put my name out there, and and boy, what how how powerful the TV is, you know, because of, what has it been three years or uh, one four or something like that since the show? I don't know where <laughs> where, where am I? Um, no, it, it was uh, it, it was a big stepping stone. It, it, it put my name out there, and uh, I really needed that. Uh, to keep myself going in this business. Yeah, the, the music business is very open, up and down. I, I mean, as far as the Vegas scene, I'm not really sure, but I know down here for guys like myself, it, it, I mean, you play the circuit and you play the South, but then, you know, at some point, like, you can, you either got to go further, you got to challenge yourself more, or, or you got to just go home. And, you know, to see somebody like yourself that it has actually embraced and, and has made it as far as you have, I mean, it's very... It's very, very inspirational. You're right about that, brother. How how the the industry is up and down, and and um, you know, it, it, a lot of people get discouraged in the business. Uh, but if you if you if you keep your nose to the grindstone um, and going after your goal, eventually it'll happen. Uh, it's taken a long time for me. I never gave up. Um, you know, I'm I'm a one trick pony, still trying to get this this. Uh, this trick down, you know, <laughs> so, um, you know, but, um, but I never gave up. It's all I know. And, uh, and it paid off, you know, and, it, and it's still paying off. And, uh, and I've been blessed. God has blessed me. Uh, you're a musician too, Russell? Yes, I am. Yes. I've, I've played, uh, you... probably the past 15 years or so. I, we've, I've seen you many times over, uh, as a matter of fact, a quick story. I, I used to take my grandmother to the casino over in, uh, at the silver slipper. Oh, and uh, I remember watching because I've never been one. I don't know what it, I don't know if, if it's the same with you or anybody else, but it, the the America's Got Talent and the American Idol things did, just didn't. They never did really appeal to me. But I remember seeing uh, seeing you on that the same week. As a matter of fact, America's Got Talent. Uh, you know, it, it aired and it was your audition or something like that. I was like, well, damn, that dude's good. You know, he's one of us. You know, he's he. You could tell. I mean, he, you you paid your dues. You, you and then, you know that that Friday night or that I, no, it was a Friday. I think you were there for a Friday and Saturday. But that Friday night, I remember going over there, and I never did keep up with anything that was going on over there. I just like she liked to go, so I would bring her. Right, right. And I remember walking in, and everybody had the little hats on, and you know, and you're like, what? Well, yeah. I was looking around, like, what the hell is going on? And then somebody's like, Michael, Michael Grimm's here. It's like Michael Grimm. And then I remember you coming out, and I was. Ever since then, you know, I became uh, kind of like uh, maybe a little Michael Graham Mark, I guess is the best way oh, to put it. Wow. You know, we, I've, I've followed it. And there's a bunch of us down here. There's a lot of people here in, in the South that, that really enjoy your music and, and talk, you know, we, we cover a lot of your stuff. There's a lot of people that cover your stuff. I don't know if you know that or not. but uh, Well, I, I keep it real, that's for certain. I haven't, you know, strayed away from, from my roots, you know, and I'm very proud of where I'm from. Um, yeah, getting from the, the Louisiana and Mississippi uh, territories down there. Um, yeah, and you're right about the the industry. It's it's you know, and and I and I understand what you're saying, and and a lot of other um, musicians, artists in the music business um, being hesitant to go to these reality shows because I mean, it was always my idea that I was going to be signed to a record label and being, you know, a radio celebrity, you know, you know, not a TV a reality celebrity. But, um, you know, today with the internet, it's been very difficult. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I did try out all of the, the labels. I, I went to all of them between, you know, Nashville, LA and New York, uh, about say seven, eight years ago. Uh, I did a, a run and uh, met with all of these executives at all of these um, these record labels, and it, and it was it was tough at the time because the industry didn't know <coughs> excuse me what was going on with the music business, you know, with the internet and uh, how to do it, or how to how to take an artist on, you know, they 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 drop the developmental programs in these labels and. Uh, and um, you know, there really was no offers, so I tried that. You know, and uh, and and so I either 
I either gave up, you know, or, or just kept going and figured something else out. So I kept going, and, and uh, so a lady that I, I, I know out here, uh, entertainment director for the station casinos, uh, Judy Alberti, she she called me. Uh, she says that you should go try out Michael for the, for the America's Got Talent show. And I kind of hesitated. I went, mm-hmm. I never tried out for any of the shows. So I went and tried out. And I said, well, you know, what do I have to lose, you know? And, um, and uh, went and tried out, and and I didn't get get on there. They they, uh, you know, I did the big cattle call thing, you know, where there were thousands of people trying out for it, and uh, and yeah, they they said something like they lost the tape or something like that, you know, for me to try out again next year. Well, while I was waiting for you know next year to come, and and kind of hesitant on trying out again for the show, um, a good friend of mine, Bill Medley. You know, you know, one of the uh, Righteous Brothers. Right, right. Uh, who, who I know very well. Bill came out one night and saw me play, and, and he goes, Mike, he says, uh, he says, why don't you, you know, get your guitar and come out on the road with me and, and play guitar for me and, and sing with me and my daughter McKenna on the road. And um, and so I, I said, you know, that's an opportunity. Nice to have under the belt buckle, you know. So I... I I took Bill up on that and uh, went out on the road with him. We did Canada. We did you know, a lot of uh, uh, states around the U.S. Uh, and I was in Florida by the by the end of that year, or by the by the following uh, year. And um, and when I was in Florida playing with him, I remember getting this call, and they said, "Can you be in Hollywood tomorrow?" And uh, and I went to Bill and I said, Bill, you know, they, they want me in Hollywood tomorrow. He, he said, well, and I remember how he said, he said, well, well, what are you, what are you waiting for? Go kid. That's what he said to me. <laughs> and, uh, so, <laughs> so I was the next day I, I was, uh, I was in Hollywood and, and I thought it was going to be another cattle call and, and, uh, another trial, another trial, right. And, uh, and then there I was, they called me out on stage and, and there was the judges, uh, Pierce, uh, you know, Sharon and, and, uh, and Howie in front of me. And, uh, and that was the first episode I was on. Now what, when, whenever you, you went out there and you got Pierce Morgan, who was, I guess, uh, equivalent to, um, to a, uh, I guess Simon of the uh, Simon uh, Cow, yeah, he was like the son and right. The show, right. I mean, was it? It was. I mean, I can imagine the pressure you had, but I mean, after the fact, I mean, even hearing about Ozzy Osbourne betting a hundred bucks that you were going to win the show, I mean, how did it? How did that feel? <laughs> that was that, that. felt like I was, uh, you know, at that point when that happened, I, I really felt like I, I needed to pinch myself off and uh, see if I could wake up from what was going on because <laughs> it was very. Um, I guess the word is surreal, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, to have Ozzy betting on me. And the judges, uh, though I didn't really get to know them that well, uh, you know, they were, they, they were all very nice people, uh, including Pierce, uh, you know, very supportive. Now, at one point on the show, you had gotten sick. Yes, got me a little strep throat, is what the doctor saw, you know, so well, I get. I remember the doctor saying, well, it looks like strep throat, so we're going to treat it like strep throat. You know, so. Now, was, it, did that did that shake you up a little bit? I mean, you had to go out there and perform. Well, it was, not really. No? You know, I just, I, no, because, I, I, you know, I've, I've been doing this so long. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I have seen on many gigs uh, sick through the years. You know, that don't stop me. And, uh and uh, I just wanted to go get some rest, but the show said, no, we're going to take you to the doctor, you know, and make sure you get some antibiotics. And so, the, so I went, okay. And they're getting the car and all of a sudden there's cameras behind me you know, <laughs> following me. To the show. So they, so they taped the whole, the whole incident when I was in the doctor, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I guess that was, I, I, I really haven't watched the show since. But I guess that was one of the most entertaining uh, seasons they've had, as far as the characters or not the well, characters, they had but a lot of talent on that year. 
Um, man, I, I can go down a long list of, of, of wonderful singers and entertainers that were on that show, including Jackie Avenko, uh, you know, Fighting Gravity. But Jackie was, she'd come out of nowhere, and, that, and, and it made the ratings of that show just skyrocket that year with all the talent that was on it. So it was one of uh, the biggest years for America's Got Talent. And I was glad to be a part of that. Now, here's a here's a million dollar question. What was it like working with the lights of Mr. Poppy Seed? With uh with with who? Was it Prince Poppy Seed or Poppycock? Was oh it, Prince. <laughs> what was it like Prince working Poppycock. with the lights of him? Prince Poppycock, yes. Um what is it? Uh uh John John um uh oh, what's his last name? John uh Quail, I think, or Quail yeah. Don't crawl or something like that. Oh, he was a sweetheart of a guy, you know, nothing like, you know, uh, his, his alter ego, Prince Poppycock, who was, you know, uh, quite a character that he invented. Uh, no, it was a great, he was a great guy, great guy. Um, yeah, everybody on the show, we were all supportive of each other. Uh, you know, it, I think it's because artists are sensitive people and we all, you know, support each other. We're all in this together, you know, and, uh, who would have thought that all of us would have been in a competition, uh, you know, when we all had different plans for our, for our lives. You, you don't know what the road's going to bring you, but you have to grab those opportunities. Uh, but no, everybody was uh, just uh, wonderful people. Around there. Yes, indeed. Now, before I let you go here this evening, I, I, just, I just discovered that you may be up for a major, major role in a motion picture. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't. I, you know. Uh, we understand you can't. I, give I'll us... say it's it's a little premature to to say. I know the words out there. Uh, I've never acted, and in fact, when I was on the show, I had got a call <clears throat> to go meet up with uh, with a um, um, someone at uh, DreamWorks. They they had got a call. My management got a call. Said that Steven Spielberg wants <laughs> wants to know about you. So I went up the road. While I was in Hollywood, and long story short, the person asked me, and she she said, "Steve, Stephen, and his wife are, are fans of yours, and they want to know, uh, have you ever acted before? You know." And and, and as I, I told you, I, I I told them, I said, "Well, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a one trick pony, still trying to get this this trick down, but um, you know, I I never thought about acting. It's never really been been anything that that's ever." been on my mind or, or, or that I wanted to do. Um, but I said, you can hire me for some parties to come out and play some music, yeah. <laughs> music in the, you know, um, you know, so, so what's going on right now is, uh, uh Jared, uh, McVeigh, uh, wrote a book called, uh, uh up on that mountain. And, um, he's going to be putting a movie uh, behind it. You know, I know, I know Jared through, John Stewart, uh, the man of legends in concert, and um, and and they they're, they're convincing me that I'll I'll be able to do the role of this guy named Andy Singer, uh, the main character in the in the story. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and um, so with a little you know with them convincing me, I said, well you know we'll give it a shot. Here. We'll see. You know how this goes, because yeah. I, I don't even know. I've never acted before. I don't have any clue uh, if I can do this. They're, they're pretty confident that I'll, I'll be able to do it. It's so just you know, you're not acting. You're just uh, memorizing lines because we want you to be you. Michael. That's the way they put it. So um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And I, and and my wife uh, Lucy uh, was asked to to play the love interest in the in the movie with me. Uh, now she's an act, actor, you know. She's 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 done this many times uh, before, and uh, she's she even got a call uh, for a uh, late summer movie called Bogey and the Call, which is a movie uh, about uh, Humphrey Bogart, and she's going to be playing the mother of Humphrey in in this movie, and uh, and uh, they want me to to uh, write. You know some songs for the movie, and even uh, play in the movie as uh, as the band. You might see me in the background. You know, awesome. uh, you know. So yeah, so I, I've never really thought about the movies, but they 
they're, they're coming to me with this. So once again, when opportunities come my way, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You know, I'll try anything, you know, once, <laughs> yeah. even if that gets me in trouble sometimes, but you know, I think that's the evolution of being a musician. Just like you said a while ago with the, uh, you go to the, uh, DreamWorks and wonder if you could be an actor and you're like, well, I don't know about an actor, but you can give me some, uh, gigs at the, at the parties. It, it's funny how our minds work. Cause that'd be the first thing I would have thought too. And yeah. You know, you know I mean, <laughs> I, like I said, I'm, I'm not an ace of all trades, nor have I ever tried out, you know, um, acting. You know. So right. Here we go, you know, jump over the ledge, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, I'll get the wind beneath my wings on that one. <laughs> we'll see. Is there any uh, any advice before I let you go? Is there any advice you can give to uh, any inspiring musicians out there that maybe want to follow in your footsteps? Well, you know, I, I would just say to, to any entertainer, if if you, you know, just don't give up. You know, definitely don't give up. Something will pay off eventually. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proof of that. Um, and uh, take the opportunities that come come your way. You know, um, you know, it, 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 today it's it's very hard to tell uh, where the music industry is headed. Uh, we know it has something to do with the internet, uh, but while we're in this very infant uh, transition right now, uh, to 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 keep your head above the water, uh, uh, definitely take opportunities that come and uh, and try to create those opportunities if you can, you know, whatever they may be.